Hey, what's up? My name is Alex. I'm a professional music producer. Today, I want to give you a quick review of my top 10 FF7 remake tracks. This soundtrack is also available on Amazon, and I highly recommend you to get it. I'm going to link it down below in the description. You're not going to find all of the tracks I'm going to talk about in this video in the soundtrack. To hear some of those, you have to listen to them in-game with the effects and voice muted. Anyway, let's get in the video. At position number 10, we have An Unforgettable Night. What they did with this track is absolutely incredible. I remember walking down the honey in and just being completely blown away. An Unforgettable Night draws you in by using original MIDI sound fronts from the original Honeybee track and then evolves into this absolutely groovy tune that would fit into a vintage Broadway musical just perfectly. My favorite thing was seeing how they transformed this into this. Sounds so theatrical. I definitely did not expect this out of a Final Fantasy game. There's plenty of other great tracks in the game, but this one definitely deserves a spot in my top 10 for being so original and cool. Number 9 is Hell House. I think this was composed by Mitsuto Suzuki, and his thought process while arranging this track must have been something like, hmm, I wonder how many Final Fantasy VII references I can fit into one single track. This is one of the many tracks where it becomes apparent just how much effort has been put in the music for this game. The fact that most bosses have their own music that only plays once in the game is already outstanding for a JRPG. But it just becomes ridiculous when set tracks are so complex as to feature a plethora of motifs from the game. For example, we have those who fight. There is those who fight further also, the boss track. Hellhouse also features the Prelude. And also has a nod to the Final Fantasy VII main theme. Apart from that, when it comes to the original ideas in this track, we have a freaking fugue. I mean, that's just crazy. And also, this track features an electric violin solo. And that's how you know Mitsuto Suzuki scored it. He used that a lot in Final Fantasy XIII, and a perfect example is the Lightning Returns main theme. I absolutely love Final Fantasy XIII, so when I heard nods to that in the Final Fantasy VII Remake soundtrack, you can be sure I was fanboying pretty hard. Thus, Hell House is one of my top 10 tracks. Number 8 is A Solemn Sunset. Speaking of Final Fantasy XIII nods, A Solemn Sunset is one of the tracks where the genius of Masashi Hamauzu absolutely shines. Hamauzu is the type of composer who's able to pull from opposite sides of the emotional spectrum. This is due to the way the man writes chords. Basically, he always adds one or two extra notes in his chord progression and that makes his music transcend the idea of simply being sad or simply being happy. It goes to a much more intricate, deeper place. For example, the first chord in this track is a C minor chord, which normally you'd write like this. However, Hamauzu wrote this as a C minor 11th chord. He basically added three extra notes to make this much more mysterious and human. This is what made Final Fantasy XIII soundtrack so amazing. Check out Surya Springs, for example. Hate it or love it, there is no question that XIII's music just nails the intricacies of representing such vulnerable characters as the cast of that game. They're very human and very vulnerable and broken, but in a beautiful way, and the music represents that so incredibly well. Hamauzu did a bit of that here in FF7 Remake as well. In this case, the soundtrack is representing a sense of grief and a sense of wonder at the same time. On one hand, we just lost some of our important companions. On another hand, we're witnessing a spectacle that we never saw before in the game. A beautiful red sunset as seen from atop of the Midgar plate. This interesting mix of contrasting emotions and that beautiful orchestration makes this track 
definitely one of my top 10. Number 7 is Tifa's theme from the jukebox. I still remember approaching the 7th heaven jukebox and hearing this jazzy arrangement of Tifa's theme coming out of it. At first, I thought they put Insane in the Rain in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Then I realized it's just one of an endless list of jukebox tracks they've wrote for the sole purpose of including even more music in the game, as a way to also please the fans with beautiful reimaginations of what they already knew. Once again, remake done right. Quite frankly, it blew my mind and it filled me with gratitude, so I stayed and listened in awe. This is also part of a Final Fantasy VII jazz album released by Square Enix a few months before the remake. It's absolutely great and I recommend you guys to check it out and buy it on Amazon. Number 6 is Smash'em Rip'em. Now, of all the surprises in this soundtrack, did you expect Final Fantasy to go full on Tekken? Because I surely did not, my boy! Am I glad it did! What I love about Electronic Tracks in FF7 Remake is that despite being bangers, they hide some very musically advanced idea in them. Check out the chords played by the synthesizers in the intro, for example. Who would have ever thought that a drum and bass banger could hide such funky chords? They are so cool and they totally remind me of the music from T-Lopes from Sonic Mania. In fact, let's try to turn this Tifa remix into a Sonic type of track. Okay, it definitely doesn't sound as cool as T's music, but the fact that it gets close to Sonic Mania in a way just makes this track definitely belong to my top 10 list. I also love the scene in which this plays in the game. It's the crowning moment for Tifa and Aerith in FF7 Remake and this track is the perfect accompaniment for it. It's stylish, graceful, high energy and with a sprinkle of sweetness, just like the best girl, Tifa. Number 5 is Genova Quickening. Now, how do you remake a classic in a way that both surprises old fans and brings them back to 20 years before? Ask Tadayoshi Makina, the arranger for this epic boss track. To be honest, Genova Quickening deserves its own analysis video as it's a very articulate track. It starts with a slow yet epic orchestration that is worthy of a Dark Souls game for its use of choir and tubular bells. This epic rendition makes this fight way more cinematic than we remembered it to be. However, the slower tempo also makes this quite anticlimactic, considering it's Genova. That is, until we had this reveal later in the fight that made us go something like... And the reason why we all got triggered when hearing Phase 3 has to do with what makes this track unique and unforgettable. I'm talking about the 4 on the floor techno kick and the sci-fi alien synth that blends perfectly to that epic orchestra. As soon as we heard those elements we knew we were about to experience one of the highlights of our childhoods once again. There are only a few tracks in Final Fantasy with the same structure as this. In fact, I'm gonna show you another one. Check out how it overlays perfectly to Genova just because they're brothers. Also, like I mentioned in my Genova melody analysis that I published a few weeks ago, this track's main theme is just unforgettably cool and the music theory behind it is also a metaphor to the lore of Final Fantasy VII. It belongs on my top 5, no questions asked. Also, did you guys notice that jolly nod to One Winged Angel? Number 4 is Collapse Sector 7 Plate, or the track that we used to call The Day Midgar Stood Still. This theme hit hard when it played and ended up becoming one of my favorite Final Fantasy themes of all time. There's two things I love about it in terms of story. First is that Collapse Sector 7 is a reference to Final Fantasy XV. Let me explain. This track essentially plays only once in the game, which is at a peculiar moment where the foundations of our world seem to have been crushed. 
leaving us scarred and determined to put an end to all of this. It's a very introspective moment for our characters, and it's being represented by these beautiful piano chords that sound incredibly cinematic because of their sound design. Let me walk you through the process of how this was made. You start with some emotional piano chords. A bit dry, let's use a soft felt piano. Better. Now it needs more reverb and pads. Hmm. Let's add the cinematic boom. Definitely atmospheric now. It makes it even more emotional. The same happened in Final Fantasy XV during a very introspective moment from Noctis towards the end of the game, in which we hear the track Homecoming, a melancholic piece of music that follows the same exact recipe. Now, beside the fact that this is a reference to one of my favorite moments in Final Fantasy XV, the second reason why I love this track so much is that it actually secretly builds up throughout the whole game before we even hear it in this moment. Collapse Sector 7 is in fact an arrangement of the Avalanche theme, one of the new compositions for FF7 Remake that contributed to make us fall even more in love with Biggs, Jesse and Witch by appearing in key moments in the game. I'm talking about this one. That melody right there always plays in happy or uplifting moments, and we hear it once again in Collapse Sector 7. But this time it's played on a very sad and solemn trumpet, reminding us of the terrible fate that Jesse, Biggs and Wedge met just a few hours prior to this point. Because of the combination of trumpet and mournful cello and deep melancholic atmosphere with the piano, it sounds like a song to salute some war heroes, and it's quite accurate to be honest. I still get goosebumps when I think about it, and it's definitely one of my favorite tracks in the whole game. Number three is Ignition Flame, the boss battle theme for Rush, and I call this one the one time that Final Fantasy VII went full Hollywood, because I mean, have you heard these chords? That mode change is so interesting, and the tribal drums and the exotic chords in the orchestra make this fight sound like it's a battle against a primal warrior, which is absolutely fitting for Rush since he's a bit savage. This is merely hinted at, but if we add some ethnic vocals and chants, then it will become much more clear why I say this sounds like a savage music. I don't know, it's as if Cloud and Rush are two prehistorical alpha males who cannot stand to live together in harmony, so they have to clash. What a way to introduce this new character. The one thing that makes this even better is the sudden reveal in the middle of the track, in which we realize this is yet another arrangement of the Final Fantasy VII battle theme. Once again, the remake hits us with nostalgia mixed with newness, with an absolutely incredible sound and a very interesting key change in the melody as well. This track is already perfect, but it breaks its limits by having a violin solo in the middle, which is also accompanied with some very cool sound design. I mean, Ignition Flame is definitely one of the most outstanding boss tracks in the whole game for me, considering also that this is a new theme. Track number two is The Airbuster. This is the quintessential, fundamental, absolute masterpiece that took us back in time. That heavy guitar in the beginning makes it clear. Final Fantasy Rock is back, baby! Once again, Tadayoshi Makino, freaking legend. That guy is totally unhinged, and I wish to see him more in the Final Fantasy soundtrack in the future. This arrangement of those who fight further brought back the progressive rock sound that some of the fans got attached to, and also made symphonic metal cool again. Another cool thing about the Airbuster is that this track has so many phases and they cycle through throughout the combat based on how you're doing. That is an idea that they took from Final Fantasy XV Hellfire and they implemented it in every single important boss fight in Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's another way in which XV influenced VII Remake. And I'm so glad for it, because the music that came out of that implementation is just bananas. There is plenty to say about what makes the Airbuster the second best track in the whole soundtrack for me. In fact, 
I made a 17 minute video analysis about it here on YouTube. If you want to hear my take on it, I recommend you to check out that video because it's very juicy. Track number one is One Winged Angel Rebirth. This is hands down the magnum opus of Final Fantasy VII. 20 years ago as it is now. The whole FF7 remake soundtrack is absolutely mind blowing. There's many tracks that are incredible which I haven't named in this video, maybe I'm gonna do another one, but to exceed that level of wonder, they seriously had to go to town and oh lord they did! This orchestration is metal as hell. I will do a poor attempt to demonstrate my point right here. Okay, if my guitar tone wasn't so bad, it would have been cool, but trust me, this orchestration is designed to be heavy. That's what happens when you take Uematsu's legendary music and have it revamped by Masashi Hamauzu and Yasunori Nishiki. One is an absolute visionary, while the other one wrote Daughter of the Black God for Octopath Traveler. This couldn't have sounded more epic. Despite the fact that we all know this track by heart, they extended it with so many interesting passages that we weren't expecting at all. For example, that key change here. Stuff like this just makes it more intense than we thought was humanly possible. I was really afraid when I was facing Sephiroth because of this freaking soundtrack. Some of the new passages also include references to the Final Fantasy VII battle theme, Whispers theme and the boss fight theme, those who fight further. Once again, this is another track that deserves its own video, or probably even more than just one because it's so articulated, so we'll talk about it more in the future, but you can definitely be sure it's the absolute best track in the whole psych. The best one is obviously Hip Hop the Chocobo.